Good morning. Good morning. I'm the Reverend Judy Cooper, the Association pa Associate Pastor here at Colby. On behalf of our pastor and uh, Reverend Gregory P. Kent, better known as the Gregory, <laughs> and our trustees, welcome to the Andrew Jackson Davis Hall and our Sunday service. At this time, I'd like any of our new visitors to raise your hand. We have a little package for you, and we are very thankful you're here, and we're taking names because we want you back next time. Okay, and uh, Claire is going to hand those out for us. Okay. Well, thank you for coming out in this weather. You know, we, we all, all, we need the rain, so that's good. At this time, I'd like to uh, begin the service with uh, Gale lighting three candles symbolizing body, mind, and spirit. Oh, good girl, she got it lit. Thank you very much, Gail. At this time, I'd like you to rise for the invocation. We invite the infinite spirit to bring into this room love and understanding. The love to open our hearts and the understanding to appreciate the ability to open our hearts and gain wisdom. And it's, name, it's in the name of truth we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated this time. All right. Everyone have a bulletin? Good. Located in the bulletin is our de Declaration of Principles. Please join with me in reciting these principles. And as we say them, let them be a little bit more than just words. Let them resonate within us. We believe in infinite intelligence. We believe that the phenomena of nature, both physical and spiritual, are the expressions of infinite intelligence. We affirm that the correct understanding of such expression and living in accordance therewith constitute true religion. We affirm that the existence and personal identity of the individual continue after the change called death. We affirm that communication with the so-called dead is a fact scientifically proven by the phenomena of spiritualism. We believe that the highest morality is contained in the golden rule. Whatever so ye would that others should do unto you, do ye also unto them. We affirm that the moral responsibility of the individual and that we make our own happiness or unhappiness as we obey or disobey nature's physical and spiritual laws. We affirm that the doorway to reformation is never closed against any human soul here or hereafter. We affirm that the precepts of prophecy and healing contained in the Bible are divine attributes proven through mediumship. To prepare for our healing portion of the service, let's join in again with the, in reciting the healing prayer, our spiritual healing prayer, and that is also in your bulletin. And again, let's say these with a sense of understanding and meaning. We get very uh, comfortable in just reciting things without totally understanding what we're saying, but we need to understand what we're saying. I ask the great unseen healing force to move all obstructions from my mind and body and to restore me to perfect health. I ask this in all sincerity and honesty, and I will do my part. I ask this great unseen healing force to help both present and absent ones who are in need of help and to restore them to perfect health. I put my trust in the love and power of God. 
All right, at this time we're going to uh, go into a little of a bit of a healing meditation. This is our healing portion of the service. So I ask you to get very comfortable, feet on the floor, your hands whichever way you're comfortable, up or down in your lap. Take a couple of deep breaths and we're going to go on a little journey. Visualize yourself on a path. This path, you feel a cool breeze all around you. You feel it through your hair. It even tickles your eyelashes a bit. And you feel very, very much at peace. And as you walk down this path, you see nature in its full glory. Greens, many shades of healing greens. You see the sky, the blue sky of the infinite. You see little buds of flowers all along this path. And you gain a sense, a real deep sense of appreciation for the gift of nature that is all around us. And you say to yourself, please keep this picture in my mind and my heart as I go through my days. And as we walk down this path, you see a big wide opening and in this opening there's a very very large building this building is made out of nature there's wood there's marble steps it is just a grand grand building and you're in awe of the energy that is coming out of this building you get a little eager because you want to rush into this building and find out what's in it. But as you start up at the steps, a spirit comes to you. And the spirit says to us, take your time, enjoy it, feel the power of this building. The spirit reaches out and takes your hand and you feel a tingle in your right hand as the spirit takes hold of your hand. You walk up the steps, these beautiful marble steps. As you walk up to them, you're realizing you're walking up seven steps, which is more powerful with each step you take. You come to the door, and it's a very large pine door, beautifully carved with all sorts of symbols of nature, flowers. There's a little carved stream. There's trees, and you're just amazed at the beauty and the details in this door. As you walk up to it, your guide takes your hand and says, when you go through, experience on all your senses what you're going to feel when you go into this building. And you go to reach for the door, but you realize the door is open for you. And you walk in through this door and you're overwhelmed with energies. You're overwhelmed with the sense of peace, of love, of healing. You're also aware of all the fragrances you smell around you. You smell pine, not fresh pine, but pine that's been aged for many, many, many years. And there's a sense of knowing when you smell this pine. You step in and you're just amazed at the many, many rows of books and bookshelves. All sizes of books. 
And as you look around this very large room, you're aware that this room is large, but it also reaches up, reaches up. It goes very, very high to the point that you cannot actually see the top shelves. You're just amazed at this. You want to run and touch and read everything that's on these shelves. But your guide again takes your hand and says, take your time, enjoy this energy. Feel this energy from the bottom of your feet to the very top of your head. Feel it, enjoy it. Again, the fragrance of pine and leather from the bindings of the book just sort of overwhelms you with excitement. And as you look around, you just, you're just so excited with the anticipation of what is going to happen next. You also see in the middle of this room a very large oak table with one chair. And your guide says that chair is for you. But before you go to that chair, you need to look around this room and you need to focus on one book. Doesn't make any difference where this book is, whether it's very low on the shelf or up into the clouds of the shelves. Focus on this one book. Your guide goes on to say, this book is your book. This is the book that you need to take. So as you look around, take a moment and focus on one book. It could be a leather book. It could be a cloth bound book. It could have a binding of red, green, yellow, a rainbow. This is your book. So go out and reach for that book. If it's high, as you raise your hand to get it, the book just sort of flies off of that shell down into your hands. And as you touch that book, you feel such a sense of love, such a deep, unconditional love that you have never, ever experienced before. Your heart is beating warm. It's not beating fast. It's beating warm in a sense of contentment and appreciation for this book. And as you look at the title of the book, you see your name in gold written on this book. Your guide again takes your hand and takes you over to the table and the chair. And you sit down with your book, excited to see what's in it. As you sit the book down, you go to open it, but it opens on its own. And it goes to a certain page. And you see this page and you realize this is the information this is the love, this is the peace, and this is the healing that you need for today. To gain it today, to be able to take it from this huge, beautiful library and take it into the rest of your life. You sit down and you start to read. Your guide comes up behind you and puts their hand on the top of your head. And it's as if all the lights of the universe is shining. And you take the time and read this book. 
take this information, take this healing energy, take it into your soul, take it into your heart. I'm going to leave you a minute to read this and be able to comprehend just what the universe, what your life needs right now. As you're sitting there, reading over your page, a little child runs up and sits on the edge of the table. And this little child reaches to the front part of the book and tears out some pages and looks at you with a twinkle in their eye and saying, you're letting go of things that have kept you from being who you want to be. This little child tears up those pages and as you hear the ripping of the page, you turn loose of all that pain that you might have been carrying through your life. Then this little child gets up and skips off. When this child does that, you have it feeling that you want to get up and skip. You feel so relieved. So you feel such a sense of release. You are so thankful for the ability to let go of what you thought might have been challenges in the past. But now you realize there were opportunities for growth. realize now you look back down and the book is closed and you look to your guide and as you look to the guide the book goes back up on the shelf where it belongs but all that information all that energy has stayed with you so you stand up you take your guides hands and you thank this guide for this experience. You are thankful, more thankful than you can express in words, but your eyes will show the joy to those people around you. You walk to the door to leave this beautiful building knowing through meditation, you can come back and open up that book anytime you feel the need for understanding or healing. And as you walk to the door and you walk through those beautiful doors, your feet are light. It's almost as if you can walk back that path without touching the ground. You are so thankful to the deepest core of your being. And you know that this is going to stay with you and that you can revisit this vision, this insight, anytime you need it. Now at this time, you're feeling yourself sitting back in the chairs here at the Davis Hall but you're having a little bit of a difficulty turning loose of that experience. You don't need to turn loose of it. You can hold it deep within your heart 
And with that, you take a key, deep breath and you open your eyes and you realize you're back here. Everybody back? I want to stay in the library. <laughs> anytime, anytime you can go back. It's your library and it's your book. All right, at this time, is the time that uh, I feel like I need to give everybody, take a couple of deep breaths. I'm feeling the energy needs some deep breaths. Come on, deep breaths, yeah, okay. We need to love off that energy a little bit. I don't want you flying, hitting your head on the ceilings here. Okay, now at this time we are going to introduce our lecture, which to me really doesn't need any introduction. We know who this person is. We know the Reverend Gregory P. Kent. He's been uh, the leader of our Lyceum. He's a teacher, certified teacher, certified healer, ordained minister, and he uh, is a education in education. And at this time, I would like to introduce our pastor, Gregory P. Kent, better known as the Gregory. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend Cooper. Not bad for having surgery a week ago, huh? <laughs> Reverend Cooper had surgery on her wrist a week ago, and she she made it here today. So thank you. I appreciate that. I need the energy as much as everybody else. <laughs> So let's go back right now to 2006. We're going to talk about the secret. Oh, oh. the secret. Remember that? How many bought the book, bought the movie, bought the coloring book, bought, bought everything that was about the secret? Am I the only one? No. I read it. You read it? I didn't get the coloring book, though. I, want the I coloring think I made that up, but I don't know. <laughs> or the t-shirt. The Secret. Self-help book based on the film about the same name, based on the belief in the law of attraction, which claims that thoughts can change a person's directions. Thoughts can change your direction. Thoughts are energy. You put the energy out to what you want. The universe is supposed to listen. The universe is supposed to give me everything I want. Right? Uh-oh. What happened? What happened? The law of attraction. The secret said I could have everything I want. So I've asked for everything. What happened? Did I get it? You got part of it. Got part of it. Got most of it. You're still working on it, huh? <laughs> it's an ongoing process. The film claims that everything one wants or needs can be satisfied by believing in the outcome. Repeatedly thinking about it, manifesting the positive images, and that it will happen. The universe wants to please me, yes? So the universe is going to give me everything I ask for. Feelings and thoughts can attract events, feelings, and experiences from the workings of the universe to interactions among individuals in the physical, emotional, professional affairs. Okay, so let's break this down. Every one of you should be practicing the law of attraction in your life. Everyone should be practicing, even those live streaming with us, should be practicing the law of attraction. I believe in it. I practice it every day. Not a day goes by, not a morning passes by that I don't practice the law of attraction in my life. But here's what they don't always tell you. <coughs> the universe is on its own time. The universe is on its own time. The universe, infinite intelligence, God, 
is smarter than I am. They know, he knows, she knows, it knows, whatever your belief is, that what is best for my higher good and higher life, I will get. If I have what? Patience. That's the hard part. Patience. I want it now. Give me, give me, give me now. The universe doesn't work in that order. The universe is on its own time schedule. You're asking the universe, infinite intelligence, the God of your understanding, to give you something directly. Okay. Universe, I want a new house. Universe, I want a new car. Universe, I want this. But let's think it through. If the universe was to give you that, can you afford it? Can you afford it? Okay, here's the new car. Can you afford the in new insurance? Your insurance just went up. Can you afford the maintenance? See, everything has an attachment to it. So when you're asking for something, there's nothing wrong with asking. But all I ask is that you think it through. Think it all the way through. If you're to get this item or whatever you're asking for, can you afford it? Can you afford it? Emotionally, physically, financially, can you afford it? Think about what you're asking for. Two years ago, I felt it was time that I get a new car. Why not? I had my previous one for, don't judge me, five years. I wanted a new car. I can listen to my car. I listened, I drove it for five years. I can hear when the car is about to break. I just know it, it doesn't sound right. Time to get a new car. So I said to the universe, I need a new car. Same time, my niece started working at a car dealership. She might be listening. She says, we've got a great make and model coming out later in the year. Why don't you wait? Wait about three or four months until the new model comes out and maybe we can work out a deal with a trade-in, blah, blah, blah. Okay. The brand she was selling was not a brand I've had before, but I was willing to give it a try. So I waited. I'm patient. I've learned patience. Working with students with disabilities, I've learned patience. So we were getting towards the end of the year and I knew the new models were coming out. So I went on the website I said, I'm just going to look around, see what's there on her car lot where she worked. There was a trade-in, a model I liked better, a different brand I liked better, really what I wanted. I called her. I said, is that car still on the lot? She says, yes, that was Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, I was driving it home. I asked the universe for a new car. I didn't really say what type of car, even though we were looking at that one brand. She told me to wait, I waited. I did wait until that used car showed up on her lot. So I got the new car. It was within my budget, I could afford. So yes, I put out to the universe a new car. I just didn't give it a lot of energy about what the color was, what the make was. I let the universe show me something that I was gonna like and buy. And it happened. I believe, I had the belief that it's gonna happen. So it happens. That's me and my Pollyanna world. It always happens for my highest good. What I liked about the secret, those of you who saw 
I don't know if it was the movie or documentary. I'm not sure. I don't remember what it was back then. But they had all these physicists talking about the law of attraction. Do you remember that? And I thought, wow, I must be pretty smart because I can understand what they're saying. I understood the law and I understood what, how they were presenting it as physicists. Am I a physicist? No, I did not do well in science at all. But I understood the concept of the, of the universe and asking and being patient and waiting. As you're manifesting, we used to uh, do classes on, what do you call it when you put what you want on a poster board? Um, vision boards. Vision boards, thank you. You, put a, you create a vision board of what you want, okay? That's so exact, but the essence you might get. You might not get exactly what you put on that vision board, but you're gonna get some kind of essence of what's on that vision board. You might ask for a new relationship. You know, universe, the relationship I'm in just isn't working. I want a new relationship. We've all done that, okay? Even the married folks have done that. <laughs> we want a new relationship. Now, with that thought, I would say you need to be a little more detailed. What do you want to bring in as a relationship? Better than that, what do you want to let go of your current relationship so you don't get into this ugly cycle of relationship after relationship after relationship? You keep bringing in the same thing over and over and over. You have to change your thoughts. You have to change your thoughts. You have to change your attitude, you have to change who you are. I don't want to get back into a negative relationship. I only want positive relationships. In order to get into a positive relationship, maybe I need to move out of the household I'm in. Maybe I need to put some distance between me and the people, me and the relationship pool I keep fishing in, you know? Sometimes we get caught in these cycles. We keep fishing in the same pond, catching the same fish. Okay, let's go fish in another pond, see if the catches are even better than we can imagine, a bigger pond. So talking about the car, talking about relationships, happiness can happen, happiness will happen. The only thing I ask you to do is think it through. As you're putting down, as you're creating your vision board, your law of attraction. Be specific in what you want. Be specific in what you do not want. Sometimes the do not want list is longer than the want list. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with letting the universe know what I don't want. But you also need to let the universe know what you do want. So I'm going to go back probably 20 years. I was approached by an individual on a startup company. Hey Gregory, you want to be part of this company? We're going to pay you 100000 a year. I said, okay, yeah. Yeah, I don't care what it is. What is it? I'll do it. We want you to work on grants. We want you to do this. We want you to do this. Very specific what I was supposed to be doing. Oh yeah, sign me up. Absolutely. I don't mind traveling a little bit. So this went on probably six to eight months of them keep saying, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. In the meantime, it's me six to eight months visualizing this new job, visualizing what it, what all it entails that I was going to do. Then finally, it fell flat, never happened. Okay. I didn't give up my day job, smart, didn't give up my job. So I said, okay, just wasn't meant to be. Years later, 
the current job I was at was coming to an end. I applied for another job with another government agency. And lo and behold, that new job after I got there, a lot of the characteristics that I was asking for previously materialized. I put so much thought and effort into my new job and what I wanted it to look like that the universe gave it to me a few years later in another setting. So yes, the law of attraction works, but you have to think it through. You have to be open to all the possibilities that could happen. Yes, I got the job, but it wasn't with that company. It was with another company doing almost the same thing. So it does work. A year ago, I interviewed, that's spirit, spirit's talking. <laughs> a year ago, I applied for a lateral position where I'm working now. Didn't get it. Okay, again, I still have a good job. Didn't get it. But I put a lot of effort in visualizing me getting that job. A year later, I go to my boss and say, said, you know, I've been doing this job for six years. I'm kind of tired. Is there something else I can do? Why, yes, the job you applied for last year is now open. I'm just going to stick you in there. I said, great. So I've been doing that for a week. I had to wait for the universe to catch up to me. I had to wait. I had to have patience. But it came through. Am I a lucky person? Maybe. But I believe in the law of attraction. I believe it's going to happen. So it does happen. Remember, we create our own reality. My reality says it's going to happen. So it happens. When I was asked to put in my letter to be pastor, uh -uh, I'm not ready for that. Oh, no, no. <laughs> but I remember a number of years ago, Reverend Cooper said, Gregory, when you do decide to run, I'll join you. I said, okay. I wasn't ready, but the, but it, the position came open. I applied, we applied, and here we are. Okay, the universe dictates when it's going to happen, not us. Because we've been talking about that for years. One day, one day. You cannot force the natural course that needs to take place. Tell the universe what you want and then allow it to take place. With the law of attraction, also in my mind comes the law of polarity. Are you familiar with the law of polarity? Anyone? It's an interesting law. The law of polarity tells us that everything exists on a spectrum and that there are infinite number of points between the opposing ends. Fear is a degree of less courage. Sadness is a degree of less joy. It's a spectrum. When we have a decision to make in our lives, we need to be careful not to get caught in thinking that there's just two possibilities. So, I need a new car. Do I want, I don't mean to offend anyone when I say, do I want the Ford Escort or do I want the Rolls Royce? Two different sides of the spectrum. I really want that Rolls Royce. I really do. Can't afford it. Couldn't afford the insurance. Be scared to drive it. But I really wanted it. So in this spectrum, Ford Escort, Rolls Royce, we had, we, me and the universe, we had to come down that spectrum a little bit to get the car that was meant for me. Somewhere in between that spectrum. So know when you're asking the universe for something, know there are many possibilities between what you want and what's out there. 
just know the law of polarity, the spectrum. We know we have a decision to make in our lives. We need to be careful not to get caught in thinking that there's just the two possibilities, like I said. Good judgment is a result of experience, yet experience is often the result of bad judgment. See how it works. Ultimately, there's no such thing as failure or poor choices. There's just results. You worked hard on something, it doesn't work out. Did you fail? No. You only fail when you stop. Thomas Edison said, I've not failed, I've only found 10,000 ways not to make the light bulb. <laughs> Takes a while. Takes a while. The law of polarity exists as a means to enable you to learn and discover that within every perceived problem is the solution. Within every perceived failure is, is the success. You don't ever fail. You just learn something different. You're learning something different. What's most important about understanding the law of polarity is understanding the power of transformation. Sometimes we need to change who we are in order to get what we need. Sometimes we need to change who we are to get what we need. By choosing to change your perception and your resulting attitude, your view of reality becomes more fully accurate and you become more personally empowered. At work, if there's a lot of negativity around you, you have to realize not to buy into the negativity. It's my choice to buy into the negativity or not to buy into the negativity. I choose not to buy into it. Sometimes that means isolation. That's okay. I'd rather be isolated than living around the negative thoughts of the other people in the office. Think it through, is what I keep saying. It's great to have dreams. We all dream. There's nothing wrong with wanting something. But you have to be happy with yourself first. I'm extremely happy to be me in my life. I really am. Remember, I think Pollyanna. Everything's perfect. Everything's great. When we talk to the universe, when you talk to your God, when you talk to whomever you talk to, you have to realize there's always a higher power listening to you. Change your, change the way you think will change your future. Try to be as positive every day as you can. The universal time clock and your personal time clock are not always in sync. Be patient. Wait for the outcome. Wait for the desired outcome. No, it might not look exactly like you thought it would, but it's better than what you have currently. Be open and receptive. Be clear what you want and then be patient as it happens. I'm gonna finish with this quote. Maybe you've heard it. You can't always get what you want. You know where I'm going? But if you try sometimes, you'll, you'll might find you get what you need. Thank you and God bless you on your path. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Kent. A lot of information, and we appreciate that. All right, a little bit of uh, information here. It's not a little bit, it's a big deal. We're an old building. We're an old community. And we need as much donations as possible to carry on. So we have a prosperity bowl over there, the green bowl, and we uh, asked you to be generous in your donations. We've been here for uh, 125 years and we want to do 125 more. Uh, and we want these buildings to last that way too. So we do thank you very much. 
And at this time, I'd like to do a little uh, prayer for any uh, donations we have. Uh, we're going to see them in that bowl so we have them. Positive thinking here. Thank you so much for all the gifts that have been given today. And we ask the universe to return those gifts tenfold to each of the individuals that gave and bless their hearts with a sense of love and appreciation. Now we have some uh, announcements. This is a fun time. Take notes. Here's a quiz. Okay. Wednesday evening service this week will be uh, Dickie Joe Mullins, and that'll be here. It's a demonstration of spirit communication from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., and everyone is invited. Next Sunday, Lyceum is from 9.30 to 10.10 here, and the teacher will be the Reverend Ed Conklin. Our Sunday service starts at 10.30. And our lecture, lecturer will be the Reverend Jerry Moore. Uh, this Sunday we have one workshop, Getting Through These Times. Uh, it's in person and in Zoom. Uh, it is uh, here, in, it's, no, I, yeah, it's here in this building. And from two to five, and it's a $30 donation. All right, any other announcements that I missed? Oh, good, good. Uh, to participate in absentee healing, we asked you to print your first name and first initial of the last name of someone that is in need or yourself in the book that's located under the three candles right there next to Miss Claire. <laughs> For more information about the events here in the camp, uh, go to casadega.org and there's a list of them. You can participate in all our services in person or by virtually on YouTube. You can watch the past services also on YouTube under the heading Casadega, you know, Southern Casadega Spiritual Camp. Now at this time uh, we want to say goodbye to all of our online listeners. Uh, we do thank the participation and uh, if you do also would like to make a donation to the organization, you can go to www.casadega.org. And goodbye and enjoy the rest of this rainy, wonderful day.